Every baby is a special baby. Every life is special. Uh, 250 years ago, in far away Ukraine, there was a very special baby that was born. And his parents called him Israel. And very soon after, his father died. And then his mother died. And the village, the little village in the Ukraine, all of the people in the village knew that they have to take care of this little boy. It was the responsibility of the community. And so they sent him to the school when he was ready, when he was five years old, and everybody fed him and took care of him and gave him as much love as the community could give. But that little kid, this Israel, he was different than all the other kids in the school. While the other kids were learning the alphabet, little Israel liked to look outside the window and look at the birds and listen to their singing. And very soon after, the principal called Israel to the office and announced to him that they just lost all hope. And they just asked him to please just stay out of the school. Stay home. But Israel, this little Israel went to the forest. And while the other kids learned how to spell and write the alphabet, this little boy learned to distinguish between the trackings of dogs and coyotes and wolves. And he learned the birds' calls. He learned to sing with the birds. He learned to hear the wind. The forest was his school. And when he turned 15, he showed up at the school. He went right into the principal office, the same principal that kicked him out years ago and said, I would like to be hired to teach in your school. Just assign me any classroom. That very same school that kicked him out. And the principal knew that this was the responsibility of the community to raise this child. And he felt obliged to do something for him. And he said, well, we cannot really give you a classroom, but I have a job for you. You will escort all the kids from their homes to school and from school to home after the end of the day. And Israel said, fine, this is just what I wanted. And so the next day he escorted the kids to the school. And all the kids were very, very late to school that day. <laughs> Because Israel took a little detour, which was a little long detour through the forest. And he had all the kids singing and dancing with the birds in the forest. And the same thing happened the next day and the next day. But the parents and the teachers realized to their surprise that actually all the children were doing better in school. They were sleeping better. They were doing better in their tests. They were, they were doing better in their homework. And they were healthier. And they were happier children. And so they let him stay in the school. And they even matched him up with the nicest young lady of the village. He gained the respect. And he got married with this lady. And as soon as they got married, he told her, we're going to leave, we're going to the mountains. And he left the village. Up in the village, 
he told his wife, you will take care of the family. We will have children, you will work, I need to study. And he took those old Kabbalistic mystical books for, that he got from Spain, and he sat and he learned all this literature, the mystical writing that comes from the Jewish mystical tradition of Kabbalah. And for years he studied those ancient formulas and ancient mystical systems until he was ready. He took his wife and his kids and he went back down the mountains, back to the community and he started making miracles. He's actually, he actually managed to heal people by chanting various different mystical names of God. Through chanting those names, he healed people. And so his name was known from that on as the Baal Shem Tov, which means the master of the good name. And the big idea that he was teaching 250 years ago, that if you would like to connect with the source of life, if you want to find out what that thing feels like, that thing that all the scientists that humanity produced never yet figure out, and they may never ever figure out, that which is the source of all life. The Baal Shem said, you can connect to it. You can get a feeling of it through music, through dance, and through joy. And so he established a musical system of melodies that have no words. Because if you use language, you are plugging in your intellect. And that's exactly what we do not want to do when we explore the source of all life. And so all of his songs and all of his students' songs are all in gibberish. You can make any sound you want, as long as it means nothing. It's about joy. It's about losing yourself. It's about getting outside of yourself, which is what the Greek called ecstasy. And so I would like to have us try to explore this right now. This is an experiment. This is our laboratory. And I will play a song from this tradition. And I would like you to try to close your eyes and to get out of yourself and forget who you are and forget the time and just sing and just try to sense the joy through music. You can dance, you can clap, you can stand on your head, whatever you feel like. Now in this tradition, usually it's always starting slow and dark and it's slowly developing to a fast, trancy experience because it is not immediate you cannot turn a switch and lose yourself it's a journey and it starts slow and dark because it's hard and we're far away we are far away from the source and if we reach it there's joy <laughs>